King Damasi and Damasi of Western Congo land signed a lease for 30 kilometer strip of coastline in Port St. John's to a Chinese company which is going to have a Disney World, going to mine. And why does he and the Chinese company think they can get away with that? Size impact on people. It affects the lives of 18 million South Africans. He said the traditional leader has sold 13 hectares of their mother's land. Is that in spite of the fact that none of these laws have actually held up a to constitutional scrutiny and b uh, very few of them have managed to make it all the way through the parliamentary process. You will find, and you will hear today, um, recounts about how traditional leaders are operating as if they already have them. My ladies are from Northwest, and our land is also one of the targets of mining because they're mining diamonds from our land, and we don't have a say, and we need to give consent. And there's actually a private land that was bought by our forefathers. So, so I think as we have these conversations, it's easy to just look at the structural issues that we're dealing with, but it's human beings that are being impacted on a day-to-day -day basis. If this type of abuse, the types of experiences that you're going to hear about uh, today, are taking place in a context where they are not sanctioned by law, one can only imagine <coughs> what will happen and how things will play out when these problematic pieces of law are passed. All of us, we want tenure security in the rural areas. So we want a legislation that would give people tenure rights. It is not that people don't want to respect the institution of traditional leaders, but they are saying, regulate what is coming. And also in Kolobeni, we are facing with the proposed mining. The mining company from Australia uh, discovered the minerals in our own land where we live for centuries. And uh, when they discovered this titanium, we said, um, no, we don't need minerals. We're not eating minerals, we eat food. Uh, we have a right to decide what is good for us. And uh, it doesn't matter what we're saying, uh, the government was keep uh, supporting the mining company to come and push us away from the land. And uh, we decided to take our own state to court. The judgment was being handed down uh, last year in November, where the judge, uh, it says that we have a right to say no. But guess what was happening? But the state says, we're going to appeal the decision. If um, the government is going to pass this TKB. It's just a way of taking the land away from us. And Russia and China, they are waiting for the president to sign this bill yeah. in order to build these shopping malls, these mines and everything. Malanga, people of Malanga left behind in the democracy that, they, uh, that we have voted in 1994. We are still under the control of apartheid mm. is in Comas local municipality. They don't know nothing about uh, the law. They don't want to follow any law of government. And these uh, uh, farms and minerals in that land, they, they're just selling to everyone who's coming, especially foreigners. I come from KZN in an area called Somke. So basically where I come from, there is a mining company that is already mining anthracite coal. It's an open cast coal mine called Tendel. As the process <coughs> unfolds, we discovered who are those people that actually gave the go-ahead of this project. And it could be nothing other than the traditional leaders. So although these bills are not yet signed into law by the president, but already where I come from, it seems like they've been 
into effect for a very long time. So uh, the government now is trying to give these people powers which they never had in terms of custom. So they want these chiefs to be presiding officers. If you are a presiding officer, you have to have studied interpretation of stage. You will be able to understand words, connect them and everything. Such a law, I think, is unconstitutional. That South Africa is one, and we have courts for rural people and courts for urban people. That's very wrong. All of these deals done by traditional leaders are unlawful. Uh, as we are talking about the women, in terms of the custom, in Pondoland, we are so different. And we are very proud of that. In Pondoland, we even nominate a female as our written. But they said, no, she can't rule the nation of Pondoland. In Pondoland, we have two kings, the king of the state and the king of the community. Because of what they are practicing this TKLP before it's being passed. So when people tell these stories of humility, they don't often bring across the risks that they and their families are taking every single day to try and keep these laws at bay and to try and keep hold of this. This our government is really taking us for a ride. In 1994, we were told that there will be three spheres of government, which is your national, provincial, and local government. But it seems as now the very same government is pushing for another sphere, where they are promoting the traditional leaders to be another sphere to even have a say to what people must decide. We are being forced to be taken to the old boundaries of apartheid. Which my understanding of the chief is that the chief is actually a custodian of a land. He's not the owner of the land. There's no chief that owns the land. Because the land, for it to be bought, was bought by the, by the families. So now, we are sitting with the problem whereby they want to take those particular powers of the people that have bought the voice to say yes or no to any development in their land and give it to the chief, which is totally wrong. And last week when I went to the public hearing <coughs> at the legislature, the chiefs were guaranteed by the speaker of speakers of Northwest that they shouldn't worry because they're, gonna, they're going to sign deals because the president is going to sign the, the TKLB. As an ANC member, I grew up within the ANC. And this year, uh, in fact, I would have been a member in my own right for 50 years. I'm appalled that the ANC in Parliament can be pushing these bills. Because in my experience, the ANC fought against tribalism. These TKLB, TCB are striving to make 17 million people second class citizens under a different set of rules. It is appalling. And we've got to continue to fight within the ANC to say, listen, stop, think, what are you doing? How do we undo or move forward from the damage that has already been done? The damage that's already been done in the Amadeba community, where people have been pitted against each other. How do we help people to restore community? Speaking from my heart, just to listen to people know what they are talking about in their humility who nevertheless deliver stuff that uh, makes you feel so um, isolated from the real people of this country. Were, were there any dissenting voice? Yeah. Were there any people questioning that? I was the only one only questioning. One? Really? Gosh, how did that feel? I, I felt very disappointed and I, I, was, I was very angry. I couldn't even sleep. So it's, it's really worrying because most people around the Northwest in Mafeking, mm. they do not know about these bills and these laws. Mm. And they, do not, they don't even actually know their rights as mm. residents or as landowners around Northwest. They're yeah. thinking that whatever the, the chief says, it's right because he's the chief and he's, he's part of government. Mm. So. What Tambo used to say, Oliver Tambo, say, comrades, 
the purpose of the struggle is to overthrow the apartheid racist regime and replace it with a democratic and, he always said, an ethical system of government. So much of you have become very corrupt in handling politics in the urban areas. We have actually not just sold out the people in rural areas. We, we have, as people have said so eloquently here, actually adopted what the apartheid government used to do. Well, just to say that the Stop the Bantu Bill campaign got a major boost from the Presidential Land <coughs> Commission report because that report also recommended that the President shouldn't sign any of these bills into law and talked about their contradictory nature and the problems specifically that women have with traditional leadership and with land rights. To give traditional leaders the powers to decide about other people's land rights and to take away people's decision-making authority is in contravention of the Bill of Rights. I mean, when Nantle was talking about the Chinese and the Russians, King Damase and Damase of Western Pondo land signed a lease and the rent that they're going to pay is one million rand a year. And in exchange, he promises to clear the land of all the people living south and north and in Port St. John's. Now, what kind of a deal is that? It's because laws like this encourage traditional leaders to think they have absolutely unfettered powers. We know there are similar deals signed by the Ingonyama Trust in Pazubi Natal with Indian and Russian companies where big swathes of coastland are given over for harbors and armaments factories and other things. The resistance that Connie described has culminated in two really important judgments last year. First was the Maledu judgment in the Constitutional Court, and second the Tolaveni judgment in the North Carlton High Court. And both of them basically upheld that Section 25 of the Constitution secures tenure rights, and it was just after the Constitutional Court judgment that the TKLB was amended to say that notwithstanding any other law, chiefs should be given this right to sign these kinds of deals. So they are actually trying to produce laws to counter the victories, the hard-fought victories that people have managed to win by reference to the Constitution. We've got to look at the fact that 600 million rand was stolen from the account of the Bapu Bamukhali in Northwest, a deeply <coughs> impoverished community, and it was stolen from accounts held in the office of the Premier of the Northwest Province, Supra Mahomapen. We've got to look at the fact that we have a report now showing that the Bahata Bakafela, with their extremely rich platinum deposits, have lost. 25 billion land in value, and who has profited? You know, the key point is this, that what do these laws do? They deny that rural African people have property rights, they assert that the chiefs own land, and they deny that rural African people have, have decision-making authority. And those two denials are what colonialism did. And that's exactly what the National Party did. <coughs> And the tragedy is that what we're seeing here is instead of a country that's looking at building agriculture, we're looking at a country that, because of different factions and interest groups, sees its quickest route to wealth as looting gardens, looting the people below, looting the poor and the vulnerable. The tragedy of all of this is not only that we have a government that is colluding and dispossessing people, but we have a government that has no vision of development other than that, other than one based on looting and dispossession. <laughs>